Good morning. I hope all is well today. Once again, it is my pleasure to come before you and share the bread of life. Today's uh, passage of scripture will be coming out of the book of Galatians. Galatians first chapter, verses 13 through 23. Galatians chapter one, verses 13 through 23. And before I get started, let's go in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for allowing us to see this new day. We thank you for your grace and for your mercy. And I'm asking you once again to use your servant as only you can. Lord, let the things that come out of my mouth be pleasing in your sight today. May someone ask, after they hear this message, what must I do to be saved? Lord, we know with you all things are possible. And so we know it's possible for someone to hear and to receive you. And so that is my prayer today, that someone will hear this message and receive you as their own. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Again, I'll be coming out of the book of Galatians, first chapter, verses 13 through 23, and it reads as follows. For ye have heard of my conversation, my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it, and profited in the Jews' religion above many my equals in mine own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace, to reveal his son in me that I might preach him amongst the heathens. Immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. Neither I went up to Jerusalem, Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went into Arabia and returned again to Damascus. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him 15 days. But other of the disciples saw I none, save James, the Lord's brother. Now the things which I write unto you, behold, before God, I lie not. Afterwards, I went into the regions of Syria and Cilicia and was unknown by face unto the churches of Judea which were in Christ. But they had heard only that he which persecuted us in times past now preaches the faith which once he destroyed. Now preaches the faith that once he destroyed. I like to start off with just a little bit of background or information. And so today we're gonna look at four words. One is an action that you should take and the other is an action that is taken. So we're gonna start with benevolent. Benevolent means marked by or disposed to doing good, organized for the purpose of doing good, marked by or suggestive of goodwill. That's benevolent. Benevolence is disposition to do good, an act of kindness, a generous gift. And now we're going to look at the word mission. The act or an instance of sending a ministry commissioned by a religious organization to propagate, which means to spread and promote a theory, to propagate its faith or carry on humani humanitarian work, a course of sermons and services given to convert the unchurched or quickened Christian faith. And now we'll look at the word missionary. Missionary, relating to, engaged in, or devoted to missions. A person undertaking a mission and especially 
a religious mission. So you see of the four words, one is telling you what you should do, it's an act of, the other one is acting upon it. So we see that benevolence is telling you what you should do. Benevolent, benevolence is what you do. Mission is what you should do. Missionary is what you're doing. So basically speaking, missions are tasks on which God sends a person whom he has called, particularly a mission to introduce another group of people to salvation in Christ. Now, having said that, the topic of today's sermon is called, sent, and went. Called, sent, and went. And this passage of scripture is about Paul. And you'll find that in these passages of scriptures that Paul was called, then Paul was sent to share the gospel, and Paul went to do just that. So we know that this is what we as believers should be doing. If we are called, we're going to be sent. And so we need to be willing to do that. We need to be willing to go out and spread the gospel. See, the mission of the church is to send missionaries to all parts of the world until everyone, until everyone has had the opportunity to hear the message of Jesus and accept him as your Lord and Savior. That's what we are called to do. We are called to spread the gospel throughout the world. Since in the Old Testament, the foundation of mission has its boundaries in the understanding that they transcend it, which means going beyond the limits of ordinary experience for better or greater than what is usually expected. So you're going, uh, understanding that the transcendent theory of the deity, which transcends the universe, transcends time, transcends your understanding, etc., God is also the God who is involved in history. He's involved in it because he created it. He is the God who acts. Remember? And when you act, you're doing something. The act of and the act. It's two different things. Okay? History shows us that his work is both revelatory, revealing something unknown, and redemptive. That is the word. It's redemptive. God's mission concern is inclusive, not exclusive. In other words, his word was meant for everybody. The New Testament brings to a crescendo, which means it gradually increased. A crescendo is something like musicians. They gradually increase in volume. So this is something that's going to gradually increase in the arrangements of the theme of mission. Jesus was sent to seek and to save the lost. We tell, it tells us that in Luke 19, 10. Through his teachings, Jesus made clear that his mission was to continue after he descended. In other words, he didn't just come here to uh, inform a few people of what he was going to be doing. His mission was intended to go on the word the gospel, the good news was to carry on even after he was gone because he knew he was only going to be here for a set amount of time. But he also knew that the word will stand forever. And so he's preparing. And Paul is one of the people that he prepared to share the gospel. Each of the gospels and acts contain an account of his mandate to his followers telling them to go to the world, all throughout the world, make disciples, baptize them, and preach the gospel. You will find it in Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20. You will find it in Luke 16, verses 15 and 16. I'm sorry, Mark 16, verses 15 and 16. Luke 24, verses 46 and 49. John chapter 20, verses 21 and 22 and Acts 1, verse 8, all through. Jesus assumed that the church would reach out beyond itself. You know, in other words, we don't just come to church, hear a message, 
go home and do business as usual or come to church and fellowship with the folks that's in the church. Check on the folks that's in the church and forget about your neighbors, your, your, the lost in your family. It's, it's beyond the church. The work is be, beyond the church. The church is where you could get some training or you should get some training to be equipped to go out to spread the gospel. But we have to understand that it is definitely beyond the church. The church was to cross all barriers to reach out to all ethnic groups, clans, tribes, social classes, and all cultures. The message of salvation was to be shared with all people everywhere, not just people that look like you, not just with people that you like, not with people you're trying to make friends with. It was to be shared with all. Paul tells us that the gospel was revealed to him by divine revelation independent of man. And we see that in these 10 scriptures that I just read. So let's just go back through and look at them and just see what Paul is trying to tell us. He says, For ye have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of Christ and wasted it, and profited in the Jews' religion above many my equals, in my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my father. In other words, Paul is saying, I, I knew, I knew the law. I was more zealous of following it to the T than my peers. But what Paul does not say in verses 13 and 14 is he does not include the Jewish, Jewish law in his gospel. That is not included in Paul's gospel. His gospel of salvation by faith apart from the law, could certainly not be contributed to ignorance. Paul was a very wise man. So the fact that he did not include the Jewish laws into the gospel was not because he didn't know it. He knew it well, but he knew it did not belong in the gospel. His gospel ran counter to his background because it was not the result of his own thinking, but was given to him directly by God. And we know this is the case because it says, as, as we read further in the scripture, but when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by grace. So he was called. He says, when my, when, when, when my Savior separated me from my mother's womb, I was called by grace. And I find so many times people will always ask you, how do you know when you were saved? What happened? And some people can tell, you know, I was here, it happened on a Friday night. I was there, it happened on a Monday. They, they can. But some of us have been called through birth. So you don't know when your conversion actually took place. You didn't have that blinding light like Paul had. that He could actually tell you exactly when it happened. Not everybody has that experience, but you all should know what you know and when you know it. To reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the heathens. Sent that I might preach him among the heathens. So Paul is not only is he called, but now he's sent to go preach among the heathens. You remember back then, the Jews thought they were the only ones that were to be saved. Everybody else wasn't, wasn't worth it. And Paul has said, no, he called me, and now he's sending me to go amongst the people that we have referred to as heathens. Matter of fact, even before my conversion, even the ones that he called, I thought was heathens based on my Jewish laws, my Jewish traditions. But now Paul says, now that I've seen the light, now that my eyesight has been given back to me, I see where I went wrong. So he called me by grace that I might preach him among the heathens. Immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. He said, when that happened, when I was slapped down on the road to Damascus, I did not go and, and confer with leaders. I did not go and confer with men. He says, neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me. Didn't go to the apostles. I did not go to Jerusalem. He says, but I went into Arabia and returned again unto Damascus. 
So when Paul got converted, he didn't go spend time with the so-called religious leaders of that day, the so-called Christians, the apostles and all. He didn't, he didn't do that. All of his revelation came directly from Christ himself. So that's why he's saying, I didn't, I didn't get what I know from man. I got it directly from God. God revealed all of this to me. I spent three years learning under God. And it says, and when we move down, it says, the first few years of his ministry were independent of others in connection with his gospel. It was independent of others. In other words, it's just me, me, me. God, Paul says, just me and God, one-on-one conversing. I, I, now that I know that what I was doing was wrong, I need to learn it the right way. I need to do this thing right. And Paul was as zealous after his conversion as he was before. And we know that because the scripture tells you all the things that Paul went through but he never turned back. He never. It says, after his conversion, he did not immediately confer with human leaders, nor did he go up to Jerusalem where the other apostles were. He was not purposely trying to avoid Jerusalem, but he had been commissioned, in other words, called by the risen Lord himself and given a unique ministry to the Gentiles. He said, I, 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 I'm not called to go at this moment, to be with the Jews, I've been called and sent to go amongst the Gentiles. And so I need to find out everything that he wants me to do. I need to learn. I need to get this all because I, I had it all backwards. So, so Paul had to get all those twisted things that he'd been taught out of his mind so that he could really serve the Lord. And sometimes that's what we need to do as believers. Some of the stuff that we have been taught that is not accurate. We need to get all that stuff out of our mind. We need to turn our face to the, to the ground and just pray and, and say, Lord, you know, help me to get a better understanding of what it is you want me to do. Help me clear my mind so that the things that I do and say is pleasing in your sight. That's what Paul did. He took his time to spend time with the Lord. Paul says he was separated. God separated me from my mother's womb. Tells us that even before Paul was born, he had been set apart by God for a special work, even before he was born. Isn't that awesome? And guess what? Even before you were born, he has some work for you to do too. And one day, maybe like Paul, you will realize and recognize what you were called to do. Paul also adds that God called me through his grace. Christ in his wonderful grace saved Paul and sent him out to preach the faith that he had sought to destroy. Look at God. The very thing that Paul was going after to destroy on the road to Damascus, Damascus is the very thing that God touched his house, his heart and turned him around. So now rather than to go and destroy these Christians, he's going to give the gospel so that more will come in. He shows how God intended to reveal his son in him so he could represent the Lord Jesus to the world. And that's what Paul did. He, Paul states, he says, I went to Arabia. Every servant of the Lord needs a time of seclusion and meditation. Moses had 40 years in the wilderness. David was out there by himself herding sheep. Say alone. Sometimes you just need to be alone to spend time with them. You don't need to have all these distractions. Someone calling you or somebody asking you questions. When you're trying to spend time alone with God, you need to be in a mindset where you can receive everything that he's trying to give you. You need to be in a mindset that here I am, Lord, use me. Here I am, Lord, your servant. Please use me. Show me the way. Show me the way you would have me do this. Show me what it is that you want from me. But you can only do that sometimes if you have that sense of quiet and peace of mind. So you can hear because sometimes it's a very soft whisper. And if there's noise all around you, you will miss it. So it's good to be alone. 
so that you can spend time with him and really, really get to know him. And that's what Paul did. He spent, says, three years. That's what it says in verse 18. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him for 15 days. But other of the disciples saw I none, save James, the Lord's brother. Now the things which I write unto you, he says, behold, before God, I lie not. He says, I, I am telling you, the things that I am telling you, I will stand before God. Because this is the truth, I lie not. I spent three years having a one-on-one -on -one with him. And then after those three years, I went and I visited with Peter. Because back then, Peter was the mouthpiece. Peter was the one that was get, getting everybody else riled up and, 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 and bringing them in. But now, here's Paul who's been called and commissioned by God. Now he's going with Peter. And, and, and then after 15 days with Peter, he went to see the Lord's brother, James. Since when Paul finally went to Jerusalem, he only met with Peter and James. He spent 15 days with Peter. 15 days was not enough time for him to be trained and know the word the way he did. So the 15 days that he spent with Peter was orchestrated by God. And I know that it was orchestrated by God because the word tells us he was on perfect um, equal with these servants. He was equally with the servants of the Lord. In other words, he was as equal as the apostles that God had handpicked when he was there. He was on equal service. Service. He knew what they knew. And he was actually more zealous than a lot of them. But Paul didn't see himself as being above them. He saw himself and the, and the people around him started to see him as an equal says, afterwards, I came into the regions of Syria and Cilicia and was unknown by face unto the churches of Judea, which were in Christ, Galatians. But they had only heard that he which persecuted us in times past now preached the faith upon which he once destroyed. He says, they didn't know me personally in Judea because that's not where I was sent. He said, but they knew of me. They knew of the old Paul, Saul, the one that was persecuting Christians. But they've heard of the new Saul, who's now called Paul, who's now one of us, who's now preaching the gospel. And not only is he preaching it, he's going to jail for it. He's taking be be beatings for it. He's taking lashes. He's being... Uh, locked up. He's been thrown overboard. He's been bitten by snakes. This He, he is in 100%. He is full force all in for Jesus. And as you convert and as you tell yourself, I want to give my life to Christ, you have to understand you need to be all in. You need to not let the things that's going on around you worry you. Paul said, I'm going to stay on the battlefield until I die. And that's exactly what he did. When Paul got converted, when God showed him the real light, when he showed him the true truth, when he showed him the arrows of his ways, Paul was 100% in. He didn't go back and try to reteach all that stuff that he had been taught wrong. He was he, That was his past. He says, all this stuff I leave behind. I'm going for, I'm pressing forward. I can't change my past. And neither can you. But you can press forward. You can move on in Christ. All he's waiting for you to do is hear him when he calls you. Just hear the call. He'll send you where he wants you to go. He'll, have, he'll equip you to do the things that you need to do. After his visit to Jerusalem, he spent much of his time in the regions of Syria and Cic Cicilia. So much that the churches in Judea did not know him personally. He, he didn't hang out in Judea. They didn't know him personally. But you can bet they knew of him. All they knew was that he had treated Christians cruelly, but was now a Christian himself 
and preaching Christ to others. Because of this, they glorified God for what he had done in the life of Paul. They glorified Paul because they saw what God did in his life. This is a man who was hell-bent on destroying Christians. He was determined he was going to destroy this thing they call Christianity. They were not going to be talking about this man, this Christ. They were going to abide by these Jewish laws. They were going to do what was concerned, considered the right thing to do. They were going to follow every I and dot. They were going to cross every I. I'm sorry, dot every I and cross every T. Because that's what Paul was taught. But now that he knows better. I had a pastor that used to say, when you know better, do better. So now he knows better. And so he's doing better. And that's all Christ is asking of us. Just, you know, when you know better, do better. So in closing, I want to say this. Paul's missionary message was, and yours should be, that salvation is a free gift granted to believers and grounded solely in God's grace. It is not dependent upon human merit, activity, or effort but only upon God's undeserved love. And you'll find that in Ephesians 2, 8 through 10 and in Romans 6, 23. The message is simply this. Those who trust trust Jesus for their salvation, confess him as Lord and Savior, and believe that God raised him from the dead, Romans 10, 9, will be saved from God's wrath and become righteous in God's sight. Romans 5, 9. And the most important thing, you will be adopted into his family. Now that's good news. God's word for God's people. And at this time, we're going to have the invitation. Is there one that's going to answer the call today? He's constantly calling you. Is there one that's going to accept that call like Paul did? And says, today, I want to give my life to Christ Jesus. Today, I want to know him as my Lord and Savior. Today, I want to leave my past behind me. And from this moment on, move forward in the Lord. Is there one? When you accept him, he says, your sins have been forgiven. You just have to accept him. Is there one? Amen. And at this time, I will do the benediction. So let's bow our heads. Lord, I ask that you keep me, your servant, away from sins. Let sin not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and I shall be innocent of great transgressions. So let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer, for you I live. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Go in peace and answer the call. God bless you all.